welcome everyone. It's so nice to see so many people that are excited about Xeriscape. Are we excited? This is our Cash for Grass program, which we're calling Life After Lawn. Um, and we really want you to have a good life after your lawn is gone and make it livable. So this is what you can expect me to talk about. I'm going to tell you about the program, why we're offering it. Of course, water conservation is our job to tell you what would be required when you landscape. So that's going to be in here. That's number three. So number four, I'm going to talk about what is required to participate. I'm going to talk about what Xeriscape is a little bit. I'm not going to go into big detail on Xeriscape because I had the one in January and hopefully if you didn't know, you came to that one. But definitely tell you what it is not. I'm going to have a few slides on how to get started and planning, that kind of a thing, walking through a sample design, and then I'm going to have a few slides on how to get rid of my existing turf. I'll go through some of those pretty quickly. I have a lot of slides. I don't want to keep you here too late. I know your time's valuable. And then what's in it for you? At the end of this, you're going to get some money out of it. So I like this little slide. It's a little bit blurry, but I thought it was kind of cute. Gardeners grow by trowel and error. So how do we get started with this sea of grass? Well, this started in Europe. Um, it was pretty practical there. The weather was good for it, um, rainy, not terribly hot and dry like it is here. And it was really good around castles because they could see approaching um, you know, forces that were going to attack. So it was great in, in uh, Europe. And here's one of our modern day castles. We've got our little pictures up here, or our little plants up here, our, our dogs. We've got our pointers here. We've got our setters here. But it's relatively a flat landscape. What if we added some color and some flowers? So I just photoshopped those in. <laughs> Later on, I'm going to show you a slide of a yard that really does have flowers in their grass. It's kind of neat. Oh, right here. So this is actually in Greeley, and they have a buffalo grass lawn. And buffalo grass is a warm season grass, so it doesn't green up as early as bluegrass. So this is what they did. These, I did not Photoshop these in. This is their garden in the early spring before the buffalo grass greens up. And it's kind of neat. Uh, this is another thing I wanted to point out to you before we get started. HOAs cannot tell you that you can't xeriscape. So if any of you are worried about that, they may require you to submit a plan that they have to approve, but they cannot tell you that you can't install drought saving or native grasses, drought saving, water saving grasses, or um, Xeriscape. So just to let you know, you've got that in your back pocket. And that was passed in 2013. So this is the reality of what Greeley looked like before we all came here. You can see that it's a flat grass lawn, but it's native, so it's more adapted to here. The bluegrass is not. And not that I hate bluegrass, or not that I say you can't have it, but use it practically. So this is a new program that we've offered. We've done a, we're offering this year. We did a trial in 2018, and we have a goal to replace healthy watered turf with xeric plantings or alternative turf. So the landscape conversions have to apply with city code. That's why I have Colby here, so he can answer questions for you. And um, it's not, I want to point out, it is not to replace the lawn with rock. We don't want to see that. It just creates heat islands, and any plants that you plant in the rock, if it's not shaded at all, actually use more water than if they, you know, if they were planted in mulch or even bare dirt. So um, if you're here to do rock, you might want to go ahead and go. But, um, and, you, and again, it's not like I'm saying no rock, no turf, just use them wisely. So then we want to monitor the water use and prove that it saves water to be doing this. And hopefully this will become a regular program for the city. And then we want to monitor kind of the time and money you spend. So we're going to ask you to keep track of a few things so that we can say it costs blank, well, it's probably going to be a range, blank dollars per square foot or whatever. 
So the basic requirements are you be a City of Greeley water customer. The lawn to be converted, we're going to start with front yards. So, and it has to be healthy. So anything visible from the right of way. So if you're on an end on a corner lot and you have a side lot, you can do that. Uh, the parkway, those little strips, those detached strips from the rest of your landscaping or your front yard, any of those that are visible from the park, from the right of way. And we'd like you to complete it from sometime in between April and October. The end of the program would be the 31st. Comply with the city landscape codes. Convert 500 and up to 2,000 square feet of turf to xeric plantings. And then agree to remain in your house for at least five years. Now we understand things happen, jobs change, sometimes you have to move, but if you're somewhat committed to it. So why might you wanna do this? Is anybody's water bill too high? Anyone? Um, you wanna conserve water? Uh, how about you don't wanna have to mow anymore? You want to get, go on vacation and not have to mow or pay someone to mow. You want a more sustainable landscape? Maybe. You might want to in, encourage pollinators or urban uh, wildlife. Maybe you just, you're retired and you want to garden more and you like the pretty flowers and you like vegetables and things. So there's lots of reasons. I've got more on there. But um, the biggest reason we're supporting this is to conserve the water. Keeping in mind that you will improve your home's value by doing this because adding an, an attractive landscape will increase its value by up to 10 to 15 percent. So. so first of all, misconceptions. This is not what we're looking for. I'll probably say that several times tonight. People still think Xeriscape is rocks and cactus. It is not. We only have this one cactus that's even out here on the prairie. So. That would be a pretty boring yard. These are not Xeriscape. They won't meet code, either of those two. And here's another one that I love. I see these people all the time. They, it must be a college house. They put the sprinkler up there by the porch, and it just sprays all the way out halfway into 11th Avenue every summer. Drives me crazy. So here's one that's a lot of rock, but they do have their 50% cover. Probably. I've never actually gone out and measured it because they might shoot me if I'm sneaking around on their property. But this is an idea of what we're talking about more. And here's some, I'm just going to show you a bunch of pretty pictures. Um, here's a really attractive uses of hardscape and um, plants and using rock to enhance your, your front yard. So it can be a very lush cottage garden like the one on the right or it can be a very very xeric one which is still pretty lush on the left you can see they've got a dry riverbed so there's rock in there um, these two houses are in the same cul-de-sac and we're on the garden tour a few years ago two very different approaches i find both attractive and the people on the left travel a lot and they said we don't want to water they don't even have an irrigation system in there they they come home like two, three times a summer and water then. And the rest of the time, they don't even bother to water it. So it can be done. His question was how many weeds? And you're, ne you're never gonna get away from weeds. I mean, I have them in my lawn too. So um, you're, you're gonna just have to, weeding is an issue. You're gonna have to weed. They're both fairly densely planted. And I think the more dense your plants are, the less weeds you're gonna have. Um, but I would imagine that the one on the left is gonna have less than the one on the right because when you're watering your plants, you're also watering the weeds. And his question is about the leaves falling off the trees in the fall. It's really not recommended that you rake up your leaves. It's good habitat for pollinators, like our native bees need that to live in for the winter and create a cover for them. Um, also, we're not telling people to whack back shrubs and things, and not shrubs, but like sub shrubs that you do cut back in the spring. We recommend people wait until spring to cut them back. But that leaf litter is, it also breaks down for, um, to improve your soil and brings microorganisms. So 
If you have a big old catalpa that has huge leaves, yeah, you might want to remove those. But if they're just smaller leaves that are going to break down, or oak, because oak take a little while to break down, you might want to remove some of those, but I would still leave some of them there. That's one thing that's kind of nice is we're getting away from that really manicured pesticide, pesticide, pesticide. Everything just is get out there with a the file and you know shape up your grass. So you can have it be a little messy, and it's actually better for it. Then nature's doing what it's meant to do. So what is the required yard? So here is just a, a plot plan. And I'm just telling you this because I don't want to get in trouble with code enforcement, right? <laughs> so here's your front yard. You can see there's a driveway, there's a sidewalk. This is, happens to be a corner lot, has this sidewalk over here. These parkways are great places to landscape because they're hard to water, they're too narrow, your sprinkler systems go over into the street, over onto the sidewalk. You just need to be aware that you don't want things in there too tall and you need to be aware of these two little triangles here because those are lines of sight. When you're backing out of your driveway, you don't wanna, you wanna have a clear vision for traffic, oncoming traffic. This one over here is if there was an alley back here. So those, there's another triangle there. So just keep those in mind. So how do you decide what is 50%? So measure your length and width of your yard and then measure your hardscape, your driveway, your sidewalk, if there was a little porch out here a little walkway from the driveway, and then subtract that from the overall landscape. And then you'll know how much you need to be um, landscaping. And it needs to be about 50%. The question is, is a 50% front and back? It's just what's visible from the right of way. So in that particular case, we had the side yard, so it'd be 50% of the front and side, okay? And you do get to include canopy of plants, so if you have an existing big tree, you do get to count some of that canopy. And you may put in a four inch plant that's this big around, but if it's gonna get this big around, you get to count that. So I'm not gonna go through all the seven principles, but I'm really gonna focus on planning and design because I want these to be beautiful landscapes for you that you really love. So where do I start? Well, I would start with your title package. You should have a plot plan in there. If you bought your house 50 years ago, you may not have that. But if you bought it recently in the last 10 to 20, you probably have something that looks like this. I would either go and make copies of it, or I like to put tracing paper over the top and draw over what your property is, put in the driveway, put in the house, put all that stuff in, and then go make copies of that. And that way you have several copies that you can start working off of. Why is planning and design so important? Because it's a good xeriscape starts with a good design. And it's a bad design is gonna waste water. A good design is potential water savings. And if you have good landscape design, good irrigation design, construction and maintenance practices, you're gonna get the water conservation. So, back to the planning. This is the City of Greeley website, greeleygov.com. Right on the home page is this little maps button. Click on that, then go to property facts. Then you go up here and put in your address and it's gonna pull up your house on the screen. And you can either, there are layers in there and you can toggle off all the, their aerials or planimetric. And I would take off the aerials first and then you can use that to sketch out your house property. And that's probably the best way to go about creating your design. Then after you do that, you're gonna wanna put in all your existing things, where you have a fence, where you have a big existing tree that's creating shade, that kind of stuff. Include the stuff that's already there and that it's going to stay there. Okay, so here's, for example, a design. So see these EX tree, there to remain, existing trees. And they've got them, several of them here and then you've got your turf area. So that's where you start. And then go out to the curb, take some pictures. Go out to the front, go out to the side, this is another corner lot, take some pictures. Then go inside the house and look out your windows and take some pictures there too. Do I want to preserve that view? I've got the mountains over there. Do I want to screen from these neighbors over here that I don't wanna look at? 
those kinds of things so that you have a better idea of what you want and don't want. And then identify your needs and wants from those photos. Then the next thing you want to do is decide on your hydrozones. So we've got four here. The highest is, of course, turf, bluegrass turf, cool season, some of the fescues, things like that. The medium to high would be more water intensive, shrubs, perennials, that kind of thing. But you could still have some turf in there. Moderate would be, um, and the gallons per square foot is over the year, so that column. Bluegrass takes about 18 gallons a square foot. This one's 14 to 17. So kind of design your yard that way, or decide what you want and plan on your hydrozones. So here's a design, all turf trees. So if this lot is 4,708, 4, and I know those numbers are a little small, um, it's going to use about 19 gallons per square foot. That's going to be about 90, almost 91,000 gallons a year. That water bill is going to be about $428. So the next one, you do a little less of the high and a little more of the moderate and low, and you're going to reduce it down to 300. The next one, you've got a little less of high. It's about a third, a third, a third, which is what I recommend to people. Keep a third in turf, have a third moderate, and a third really low. And you can see it's pretty much cut that in half. So if you do the third, third, a third rule, you're going to reduce it by 50 to 60%, the water use and the bill. And then here's another design where there's no high here. All the lawn is gone. And you can see that it's still around 200, but you've got more plants in there. That might, I think that was an alternative turf in there too. All right, here's 70%. It goes down to 138 for the summer. And that's uh, the design again with the 70%. So this is kind of a conceptual plan, whereas this is more of a design. So how are we going to choose these properties? Well, in the packet, you're going to have a pre-screening survey, and we'll ask you to fill that out and get that back to us. And it's going to ask you questions about the turf and how you plan to water and things like that. And then send us some photos. And, and if you have a drawing or a design ready by March 15th, send us that. But we understand a design might take a little longer. And then April or May, we will start doing some home visits and come by and look at your property. And we'll narrow down the pool of applicants. If we have way more than we can possibly do in a year, we'll do it as a lottery. So we'll just throw it in a pot and draw out names. And then we'll let you know, OK? So some of you are probably sitting here thinking, my HOA should do this. Well, we would be interested in doing a few HOAs too. So we're going to bump up the square footage from 5,000 to 10,000 square feet. And we'll be a little more limited on how many of those we can do because it's bigger square footage. Single family residential customers would probably be our first priority, but HOAs, we might be able to work something out with you too. And then Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District has a grant program. So we're working out something so that hopefully we can partner with them and then the HOAs could do that. But that's just for commercial and HOAs. Single families can't participate in Northern's program. So the question you're probably all wondering is, how do I get rid of this turf? Well, I did some searching on YouTube. YouTube has everything on it. This guy, Robert Patrick, had a lot of really good videos you might want to watch. Um, he, he does this straw smothering. And we're going to try some of this at our Xeriscape Garden, so hopefully we'll be complete experts on this. But you can smother the lawn with hay, grass clippings, sod, paper, leaves, cardboard, and newspaper. Uh, you need to do the newspaper pretty thick, and you need to wet them as they go. But that's a really good way to do it. This is another good option. It's called solarizing. You would put plastic sheeting down. You, all of these require good, healthy so lawn to begin with, and then they need to be well watered before you start this process. Put the solarizing film down, and it's just plastic, four mil um, plastic. And it will kill 
the grass. You don't want to leave it on too long, though, because you can kill um, the good stuff in the, the good microorganisms, but you do want to leave it on long enough to kill weed seeds and pathogens. And then you're going to also have to weight it down. You can see these little bricks in the picture, weighting it down so it doesn't travel away. So here's a before and after. This was somebody when we did our pilot. He did, um, he did this front yard, and he, this is actually the second, he did this part the first year. It was even more turf. He did this part up by the house the first year, and then the second year he did this out by the street. And it turned out really nice. So that is an example of what your yard could look like. Now that is a huge front yard. Hopefully you don't have to mow that much grass, but um, that's an example of a very large yard, and he took advantage of the pilot program, and then he did such a nice job, we let him do it again the next year. This is a little bit smaller yard, and they took out all the lawn, and then they put in these nice beds with these nice little gravel walkways through here. So this is one of the houses we did, and this was a bluegrass lawn to begin with, and then this was, he did buffalo blue grama mix, and his yard looks amazing. And then I do have a picture later on in here where he had his side yard with just the blue grandma. And you, from a distance, you can't even tell. This is buffalo grass. Um, it only gets about, at the most, six inches tall. And even when it does get tall, it kind of lays over like that. And I think it's kind of pretty. And um, here's one that, where it's kept a little shorter. But this is what buffalo grass looks like. I just threw a few slides of some of these alternatives. So this is that yard I showed you earlier. This is his side yard, and it was all grandma grass. And then this is what it looks like when it goes to seed. It has these really pretty eyelash seed heads on it. So that one we recommend you don't mow all year and then just mow it in the fall to distribute your seed around. Um, this is another picture of blue grandma. And then this is another alternative turf that we tried at our Zurich Garden. It's really hard to see these little plugs up here, these little green plugs. Can you see them? That was June, about June 6th of 18. And then this was the July picture. You could see how the plugs started to fill in. We just created a little, little grid, one foot grid. And then this was the August picture. And you could still kind of see the little mounds but it's completely filled in. I will warn you, all of these turfs like sun. So if you have a lot of shade, none of these are gonna work in your yard. They all like full sun. This dog tuff where this um, shrub is shading right here is pretty thin. So those are your hot dry spots you wanna do, those. Other lawn alternatives. These are some options. This is thyme. It'll bloom in the spring and have this pretty purple color. And then once it's done blooming, it's just as green and looks like it is a lawn. You could do that with thyme, veronica, plumbago would be something you could do in a shady area if you had a shady area around a tree. Um, Delosperma or ice plant, like sun, but that would be another option. Now, thyme, veronica, plumbago, you could occasionally walk on. Ice plant and any of the succulents like that it needs to be an area you're not gonna walk on because if you squish it, it's not gonna survive. So if you do this program, what's in it for you? Well, a dollar a square foot. So if you did the maximum, 2,000 at the end of the summer, you turn in all your receipts, then we will get, cut you a check for $2,000. Um, we're gonna do the bulk, Sod removal, so you could get in on that. It will be cheaper than if you went out and tried to do it yourself. Garden in a box. This is a program where we have pre-planned gardens that you just purchase the garden online. Um, there's usually at least two sunny gardens, one shade garden, and then I think this year there's two pollinator gardens. So you have some options in there. And you can purchase that. City Greeley Water customers get $25 off on those, and you'll and I've got another slide giving you all the details on that, but that's a great way to get started. And then one thing we are gonna try and work on is some discounts with some local vendors so that um, you can maybe have a card that you go in and buy mulch or bulk products or plants. 
I can't guarantee that just yet, but we are working on it. So here's what the garden in a box might look like. It's anywhere from 14 to 30 plants. So it's in a flat, it's not actually in a, in a box, but this is what it might look like. So you could have two flats like this. If you bought one of the smaller ones, it might just be one flat. Like I said, you get the $25 discount. They'll go on sale the first week of March and they, we do sell out every year. And then you'll pick them up in May on the 27th. And we're doing a weekday pickup this time. We've always done it on a Saturday, but we're doing an evening pickup, which might be more convenient. And then I purchase a certain amount of those discounts. And then if we have more in the fall, we'll do it, offer more in the fall. If they all sell out in spring, then we'll be done. So you can get more information at greeleygov.com, conserve. And then here's another resource for you. I just wanted to point out, we've created an online searchable database of plants, so you can go in and get ideas there. It has over 1,000 photos and about 300 plants, and that's at plantsforgreeley.com. It's on our website, but it's an easy URL to keep track of, to remember. And go on there and look at plants. Say you have a spot where you need a yellow plant that blooms late summer. You can go put that in there and it'll pop up ideas for you. So the packet. Here's the Xeriscape handout. And then here's the pre-screening survey. And here's the math you're gonna <laughs> probably wanna know. And then some of the other things in here this is the handout to show you how to remove sod. There's four different methods on there, and hopefully we've walked through it carefully enough for you to figure it all out. Um, or you can participate in the sod removal. And then a big list of resources for you. Get more information. And that is it. Now I thought I'd just answer questions. His question is, how high? Now, are you talking ornamental or prairie grasses? You need to be aware of that height out in the right-of-way. It's not technically supposed to be taller than 18 inches. So I wouldn't like put tall shrubs out there. But if it's a perennial that's 18 inches and then there's a flower stalk for a month that's up higher, I think you'd be fine. Um, ornamental grasses would be fine. And ornamental grasses are a great thing to incorporate into your landscape. Um, but if you, it has to look like it has purpose. If code enforcement goes out there and it looks like a weed patch, you will get cited. Her question was when we'd have the decisions. We're hoping to get them all, all the houses visited in April. Oh, and I have that question, so I'm glad you brought that one up. He owns one property, he's interested there, but he also has a rental property and he's interested in doing it there. Yes, you can do it at both places and it'd be, up to 2,000 at either one, at either one. So you can do 500 here and 2,000 there or whatever. So in here I put a little um, sheet. It's just a spreadsheet. Just asking, you know, and I'm talking, you know, round it up to quarter of the hour, or half hour, whatever you think, about how much time you spend on things and cost of plants, trees, shrubs, and then down here is like landscaping materials. And I'm not expecting you to spend your entire summer logging this information for me. Just maybe stick it in the refrigerator or in your garden shed or wherever you're gonna be seeing it and just kind of give us an idea. And we will ask you to keep receipts for things. So keep those, get an envelope, start stashing them in there. If you don't remember or it's not real clear, um, you know, just jot a note on it so you remember. We're doing this folder. You could just stick an envelope in there and, you know, keep them in there. We just want to have an idea so we can tell people about, um, you know, about what they could expect to spend. So we have better information for the next group of people. And um, time-wise, I realize it's going to be all over the map. Some of you are going to really get into this and really spend a lot of time out there. And some of you are going to be like, plop it in, water it, and go. So, um, you know, just maybe some general thoughts on that too. But, you know, I don't expect you to spend your whole summer tracking this information for me. On here is paid labor. Okay. Or I even included, because la the last time when we did our pilot, we had someone that did a lot of salvage materials. 
So that's good information. So if you salvage something, hey, you're tearing down that brick wall, I'll take those bricks, you know? You can make a nice little pathway. So yeah, that would count towards it. Also, I would, I would um, get an irrigation audit, have Kevin come out and do an irrigation audit, and he can tell you what you need to fix. And then you're eligible for rebates too. His question is, can it be edible? So as far as the code goes, it has to be something, you would still need 50% of tree canopy and perennials and things that are gonna be there year round, but you could definitely incorporate edibles with that. And there are perennial vegetables, you know, you have rhubarb and you have horseradish and things like that. You could do berry bushes. So, um, but those are the kinds of questions to be thinking about and putting on there. You know, maybe instead of a flowering shrub, well, a fruiting shrub would have flowers too, but you could use raspberry bushes, that kind of a thing. His question is, is he's neglected his lawn. The reason why I need healthy lawns is one, in order to kill it, it has to be healthy first. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but also I have to show water savings. If you have a bare dirt yard, I can't show water savings. And if I can't show water savings, the program doesn't keep, get to continue. So that's why I'm asking for people that have healthy lawn. And his question is online resources for design. Um, well, if you do the garden in a box, those come with pre-plant, um, they have little plans in there. So you could just take that, set it out there and plant it just like it tells you to plant. But that is one way, garden in a box, simple. If you go to plantselect.org, they have online pre-planned gardens on their webpage, plantselect.org, and those are plants that have been chosen that have been underused or not used at all in the landscape. It's a CSU, Denver Botanic Gardens program, and they have pre-planned gardens on there where you could just look at it and then say, that's what I want. And they have all different things. They have a rock garden, a patio garden, a meadow garden, strip between two neighbors garden. Oh, the question is, where would he go for landscape help, um, design, install, maintenance? The best place I can recommend is go to alcc.com, and that stands for Associated Landscape Contractors. Before you all write that down, that's on your resource sheet. Associated Landscape Contractors of Colorado, and they have um, find a professional in there and you can put in your zip code and say within 50 miles and then tell them, check the boxes. Don't make it too limiting because that's gonna make your list smaller, but you know, put maybe irrigation design, that kind of thing on there. Um, and that will help you make some choices.